Okay. Um, I started the recording and. Uh, no, no, uh, don't start before I. Oh, then okay. Um, <laughs> I'll pause. Um, so one of what I was just going to give you a very brief overview of is the experience that we had in the NVO three working group on picking a data plane encapsulation, and and this. This experience involved um, a design team which do documented the criteria by which and the considerations that they used for um, for picking an encapsulation for the working group to take forward as a standards track um, solution. And if, if you're interested, those considerations are in draft IETF NVO3 NCAP, which is has recently been through working group last call. Um, so just just to, for those of you who aren't familiar with NVO3, um, the working group develops protocols and extensions um, for network vir virtualization within a data center environment um, using an IP underlay. So so essentially what it's doing is is developing solutions for data center VPNs um, to provide layer two or layer three connectivity um, to to have to support multi tenant applications and and workload mobility in data centers and between data centers to some degree, um, but a, a major part of the work of the working group was to develop an encapsulation that supported that um, virtualization, um, uh, over over an, an IP so a rooted underlay so not a not specifically a, a or it could be but I'm mostly not a, not an MPLS based underlay. Um, and, and prior to the working group formation, there were a couple of candidates that, are, that were out in the wild. These had been implemented and, and deployed, um, and they were proving pretty popular. Um, one of these is VXLAN, which is very well known, which is essentially just Ethernet over an IP UDP encapsulation. Um, and um, the, the other one is NVGRE, which is a network virtualization GRE. Um, which supports Ethernet or IP over over GRE, um, and both of these support um, essentially virtual networks over um, for these layer two or layer three services over over uh, this rooted underlay. But these weren't considered extensible enough for the different applications that NVO three wanted to wanted to deal with, um, and and there are other concerns like I think there might have been some IPR on some of them and and. Uh, um, some some of the vendors that had implemented them weren't you know were not that happy with sharing them around necessarily apart from documenting them so they were published as individual submissions um, rather than going through the working group so those are in RFC seven three four eight and seven six three seven so we needed within the working group some a new encapsulation that was a lot more extensible and flexible than than, than these ones and there were three major proposals. That, that came into the working group that were debated at, at length. One of these was called Geneve, the Generic Network Virtualization Encapsulation. Uh, the other is the Generic UDP Encapsulation, um, GU. <laughs> and one is the Generic Protocol Extension for VXLAN, or essentially just a fairly simple extension onto VXLAN, VXLAN GPE, it's called. So these were, um, there, was, there was a lot of dis debate over a period of, of I think years actually on these and and we formed over the, this period we formed one design team to try and which was chartered to to make a decision on or make a recommendation on which um, which encapsulation the working group should take forward um, that one did not come to consensus and then um, it became ex increasingly clear that we really did need to pick a single encapsulation. There was quite a lot of pressure from people to just take forward all of them. Um, so we had a directive from our AD at that time that there shall be only one encapsulation. And I think I think we we kind of formed a consensus in the working group that that multiple encapsulations, because these were very much data path affecting, hinder adoption and interoperability. So, so we formed a second design team, um, and that was instructed to propose to to analyze the the three solutions, um, three proposals, and and to decide which one we were going to take forward based on some kind of 
quantifiable criteria that they they could define. Um, we we had use cases in within that were defined within the working group, for example, and, and a framework and various other documents that they could they could base this on, and they could also. We, we had a number of um, vendors and users within the working group as well that could provide support and, and information into this design team. So the, the process that they went through and the criteria and analysis uh, was document, is do documented in this draft, which was kind of the output of the, of the um, design team. And the criteria that that, that describes um, so they, they kind of start with a basic analysis of some of the issues with each encapsulation. So it's like a, a fairly high level critique of each encapsulation. Um, they looked into some common considerations, such as the extensibility of them to support all the use cases that we had in mind. Um, there was a lot of debate, as I guess we are having here, on how hardware friendly the encapsulations were. Now in NVO3, these encapsulations or the, uh, have, uh, have to be implemented not just in routers and switches, um, but potentially in, in NICs or potentially in, purely in software and VMs. So um, this made the task quite tough, to be honest. It was difficult to just say, well, you can only do this because, it, because hard, only hardware, you know, hardware can only support this, go this far, because then you may get into a situation where um, uh, where you don't support some of the use cases, but those use cases are valid where, you know, in a software-based implementation. Um, but but that was a fairly, you know, I think that was a, a fairly unique to this this data center environment. Um, so they, they looked into things like the impact of extension header sizes, um, extension header ordering, um, whether the uh, encapsulations should use, use TLVs or bit fields, um, and the impact on the control plane, like whether whether um, some um, encapsulations could be configured simply without without a control plane, whether they need a negotiation, that that kind of thing. So the outcome of this um, was that they were able to recommend uh, were able to recommend an encapsulation to take forward on the standards track. That was Geneva, which was ultimately published as RFC eighty nine twenty six. Another realization during this process was that one of the other encapsulations had a more general applicability, potentially, uh, which is the GOO encapsulation, um, which, which went beyond NVO3. So that was actually simplified the process slightly as well, because that was taken out of the working group and moved to the internet area um, in this draft IETF into area GOO draft. Um, I think that's currently expired, though. It hasn't yet, I believe, reached an RFC state. Um, the third encapsulation, which was NVGRE, um, hasn't really progressed since then. Um, we did say that once, um, once we had published, um, one of the, one of the drafts as a standards track RFC, the, the, the working group would consider, um, publishing the other ones as experimental or informational just to document them, and so they weren't lost. Um, but we really haven't had a, a lot of a lot of um, interest in that. So what what we found actually through this process was that um, there was it, it did cause minds to be focused on on moving forward with the single single end cap. Um, I would I would mention that we, we've spoken about metrics for determining. Um, determining uh, or, or for assessing um, an encapsulation or a, a format, but the application of metrics is 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 rather difficult to be honest. Because it, if you say, well, one, th you, you could say you're doing analysis that says for hardware this is, you know, this particular feature of an encapsulation is is difficult. Well, somebody else's hardware it may not be difficult. So there's we we found that there was a quite a lot of um, uh, variation in, in, in views on, on what that really meant. Um, and that was made particularly difficult, I think, in, in NVO3 with the, the ability to really implement some of this stuff purely in software as well. Um, but anyway, it was, I think it was a, a, a worthwhile exercise and I think it's useful. Um, and I would encourage folks to 
go and take a look at the draft and see if you think any of the ideas in that and the, and the process is, is useful here. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. I have a question. So you, you were talking about um, some criteria, like um, evaluating multiple uh, attributes, not metrics you call them, but for the different solutions, like is it friendly to hardware and so on. And then the last slide you said uh, metrics were challenging. Um, I'm, I'm, I will definitely go and visit that uh, draft, but how were you able to converge then if, if not evaluating against uh, some, some um, scale? I, I think what I mean is that they're, not they're, they're, they're hard to quantify. So it becomes a qualitative decision within, within the design team. So um, I, th I think, what became if if you look at the draft it's not so it, it's not such much a case of um having checkboxes that say this is better than that um for this particular criteria there's no measurement of the number of cycles taken to process a particular header for example as far as i recall that that that's what i mean by a, a quantitative metric um but there might be um there are arguments in there, for example. So there's there's different options in the extension headers that you can use for for these encapsulations, and and there may be impacts on on the ordering of them, and the size of them, and so on. So there's sort of general statements about it's better for them to be smaller, for example, um, or 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 it doesn't actually matter which order they're in for this particular encapsulation or this particular use case, and and maybe this encapsulation supports them being in arbitrary orders. Okay. Thank you. Um, Tony, you, you want to, you have your hands raised, raised as well. Go ahead. Thank you. I think this is very wise and I hope that we can apply this wisdom here. And I hope that, um, the chairs will agree that 1 solution to M and a is preferable. And I would propose that 1 way of applying this wisdom is for the open design team to form a proposal. And set aside all of the outstanding proposals. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kariti. Thanks, Eric. Um, yeah, so Matthew, were there any attempts or any discussions of doing prototype implementations in addition to just, you know, having the high level kind of uh, judgment on, you know, keep these things small or keep, you know, uh, consider what would happen, you know, sort of the high, higher level discussions, were there any prototypes, uh, especially for software, but maybe even for hardware? There were already implementations of all three of those encapsulations, as far as I recall. Certainly there okay. was, a, I'm pretty sure there was a go and certainly was of Geneve. Um, uh, but I don't recall if there was any practical testing of them. And did that did those implementations uh, influence how things went in terms of um, you know, standardizing things? Yeah, I think so because I think with Geneve, um, I think the argument went that you can do this in you. Can, we, we know you can because there were hard, there were chip vendors that had already implemented it, so um, there were they were arguing that you know you can do it in the chip, and so and people were also saying, well, I can also do this in software, so that. Albeit perhaps more limited, but but that was kind of a, a a broader a broader solution. Whereas I, from what I recall, um, the argument was that, for example, Goo or something was was harder to do in hardware, even if it was. And I think the implementations possibly were software, mostly software based on that. Sorry, which which implementations were hard to do in hardware? I think I th I think from what I recall, Goo was considered to be harder to do in hardware. Okay, okay. All right, thank you. Okay, um, there aren't other questions. Um, um, I, 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 I'm curious on um, what was it the uh, the design team that came up with the metrics that they want to evaluate or 
they were known in advance or how did they come up with these uh, um, things that they needed to measure against? Um, I think the design team came up with them, to be honest. I, there, there was So there was one design team early on that came up with um, a fairly specific set of checkboxes um, and they may have taken inspiration from some of those. But um, hmm. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't actually don't recall how, I mean, this was five years ago, so um, uh, I don't recall exactly how they came up with the criteria. All right, thank you so much. They, they, they weren't dictated by the working group, though, that we basically kind of said, you know, we exactly. left them to, to deal with it. Okay, okay, that's clear now. Okay. All right. Um, there aren't other other questions, so um, we will move uh, move on to the next item. Um, let me put up the agenda again, and uh, I think Kuriti will be next. Um, uh, let me make sure no one is. Okay, so uh, uh, sorry, uh, Tarek. Yeah, I I just want to say that we actually plan to revisit this issue. I guess next meeting. Is oh, we, okay. we are not stopping here. We will kind of continue to discuss it. Right. Uh, to clarify, mm -hmm. you mean uh, the chairs meeting, right? Uh. Well, not really. I actually intended my intention was to actually have more discussion next week. Right. Okay. So, I mean, are we giving an action item to the design team? Uh, are we ready to give them action item, or, or we just open up the, the discussion without? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I, I can take an action item. Uh, you know, it's. it's I, th I think the action item to. Uh, is for the work for the shares to prepare agenda for next week. That's uh, and if we need to have some uh, special input. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. I, I think it's still open. Then, mm. what to do next uh, in terms of uh, these discussions? Okay. Um. All right, I was going to go to the action items. Uh, so let me flip to that. Okay, uh, let me just edit while we're going over it. So the first action item uh, was uh, to, to talk about any carry on from ITF 114. So there were some things that we wanted to follow up on. Um, uh, let me just on this side. Um, should this read? Okay, I think there was something to do with user-defined actions and then uh, competing proposals. We took an action on the uh, what Matthew presented on uh, the evaluation for NVO three um, multiple solutions and uh, I am leaving an update that the, the, the open design team chairs met last Tuesday and we talked about the metrics and uh, indeed we we gave um, Matthew gave this update and and from the chairs I guess we are leaving it open for next time to talk more about how we want to progress so anything else on uh, the the metrics i guess no, there is no action item uh, to follow um, that's a usual action item Okay, so the second uh, action item was on solution. I don't know if you think you're presenting, but you're not presenting. At least I don't see anything. I am presenting. I can see the wiki. 
Yeah, me too. Okay, I can't see anything, so maybe I'll log out and come back in. Okay. Yeah, that's weird. Usually that doesn't happen with, yeah. Uh, okay, I can wait for him to come back or... Uh... Yeah, no, go ahead. I mean, um, okay. I can go to the wiki on my own. All right, no worries. Uh, the, the action item was on solution co-authors to, um, you know, different solution co-authors um, to, to kind of uh, meet and discuss uh, options. And if this happened or any update, last time we did not record any progress on this. Um, this time, uh, let me ask if there was any progress. And I understand if uh, nothing much was done. Uh, we are talking about multiple competing solutions. Um, any of the authors wants to uh, report any, any progress? No. So, so you're talking about uh, progressing m a documents? Um, is that no, uh, so last time we, uh, mul multiple times we have encouraged, uh, multiple solutions, uh, co-authors specifically the, we, we have one solution talking about, um, the, um, extension headers, the post stack data, and we have multiple solutions talking about in stack or representing or encoding the in stack data. Um, so for the for the multiple solutions for instack data uh, we were hoping from the chair's side that um, authors meet uh, and, and discuss and then report back um, what the, what the result of discussions were yeah i haven't participated in any external such discussions okay. I, so we think... plan to but haven't done it yet. Okay. Uh, just because last time, I think you were there as well, Kiriti, Jimmy presented an, another alternative, uh, and we have, uh, we have a proposal from, from uh, Kiriti and, and others as well. And uh, we have from Jags and others or Jag. Uh, so these are the, at least I'm aware of these three, maybe there are more. <clears throat> so I don't see anyone wants to come to the mic or raising their hand. So I recorded, there was no progress on this item. Um, the next action item, um, still with Kuriti now, uh, it's on the first nibble discussion. Last time we talked about, uh, should the MNA PSD header type be signaled in the control plane? And we said need further discussion on whether data plane or control plane or both. Um, is this recorded in the draft? I mean, do we converge that uh, both options are needed and and the draft is uh, updated or? So um, there are two things. One is that we already have uh, examples of both of these. If you consider that uh, the current uh, control words and uh, you know other other um, post stack data, if you if you put them under the bucket of post stack data, so the beer header uh, control words, uh, there's one more example. Uh, if you look at those as uh, pre-existing examples of post stack data, and then of course we are going to add to it, uh, beer has both control plane and data plane. Control words typically are only in the control plane. So I signal a, P, a pseudo wire to you. I tell you I'm going to put a uh, control word, and you know to expect the control word only because of the signaling you don't have any indication in the data plane. <clears throat> so, you know, whether once the label stack ends, you should start processing the packet right away, or you should process the control word or not, that, that indication is completely in the control plane for both pseudo wires and DetNet. So we have both examples, and the, the draft does mention that. 
I think going forward, when we talk about post stack data, uh, we might want to make a decision on this. Uh, and, um, you know, like I said, we, we already have both. Um, so we might want to um, write something down how we, go, how we want to go forward. So, so Kiriti, the, about the control word and beer. Um, so these are the, the, this is signaled and then traffic, uh, you know, uh, sent from ingress to egress carries the con or the egress will expect the control word to be always present once you know it's signaled and negotiated right, uh, right. one thing that we are talking about in psd is that it's on demand and it, you know and then it's enabled disabled on per packet and not per flow or per L. so the same lsp some packets may have psd some not for the same lsp so I'm not sure signaling will work, honestly. Um, so, so this, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying, I, I'm not taking a position on this. I mean, I do have a position, but what I'm saying is that we have existing, uh, in, in beer, for example, you signal it in the control plane, but in the data plane, you have to put a, a beer label and that tells you that uh, once the label stack ends, I think the beer label has to be the last label then after that comes the beer header. Uh, for gal, the same thing. There's a gal label, and then uh, you process the ACH. Uh, so if you don't see the gal label, there is no GACH. If you don't see the beer uh, label, there is no beer header. <laughs> so in those cases, you definitely have a data plane indication. For pseudowire, you do not. Uh, and as you said, you signal it, and if I say I'm sending it, you know that you have to process it. But you, you're not going to look, there's nothing in the label stack that'll tell you, um, expect a control word. You, that's completely done in signaling. So we have both, and they both exist today. And again, I'm not taking a stance on this right now. What I'm saying is, going forward for PSD, uh, we need to make a decision. And if, as you said, we want to do it on a per packet basis, then signaling, as you said, most probably won't work. And so you need an indication in the data plane that says expect uh, post stack data for this particular packet. Okay. Uh, I think that the, 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 the flip side of this, and I don't know if Stuart is on the call, but Stuart uh, was pushing back against the idea of doing it in both places. So he gave the example of control of the control word as we only do it in the control plane. Uh, but like I said, beer and GACH both do it uh, in the data plane. Or actually, beer does it in both. I think GACH might do it in both. So um, I'm not sure GACH does it in both, does it? Uh, yeah, actually, it might do it only in the data plane. Uh, but beer does it in both. So you signal it, and then you put a beer label before you put the beer header. Uh, it depends how you do GACH. If you do it in pseudo wire, you check the label, and then you check the the, uh, the first nibble. If you do it with a gal... Well, if you look at the gal, you check the you check the gal. In there. So, uh, you normally have a um, label that tells you that this is going to go on. Right, right. So then we have all three. Well, we have yeah, we have three combinations: only control plane for pseudo wire control word and detnet control word, control plane and data plane for beer and data plane for gal uh, GACH. So. Um, and then, of course, the fourth combination is you don't have anything, which is the normal, you know, if you yeah. just do IPVPNs or just regular MPLS. So, so basically, we, we have all four. And um, going forward, I think we need to decide, do we want this in the control plane and the data plane or both? Now, my, my own uh, inclination here is that you know, it's nice to have it in the data plane. And, uh, you know, to, to Tarek's point, I think if we 
if you want to do this on a per packet basis, then we probably need it in the data plane. Uh, so I can signal to you that I might occasionally send you PSD, but uh, on a per packet basis, I have to be able to tell you, go look for PSD or there is no PSD. Either that, or we put a null PSD header and say, there's always a PSD, but uh, the, the header simply says, there's no actual data here. But yeah, I, I think um, as a design team and then as a working group, we need to make a decision here and write that down. Okay, um, just to make sure that this action item is correctly being represented so that we opened it against the draft. Uh, um, is, the, is it still against the draft or against the design team? Um, it's, it's against the design team um, and once or, or the MPLS working group more accurately. I mean, we can start here, but we ultimately have to get the working group to to weigh in on this. Uh, it can be recorded in the design team once uh, the MPLS working group uh, has its say. So I would say that it is against the draft, but you know the, the, the working group has to uh, okay. make, make a decision and then we can record it in the, in the draft. I understand. So yeah, I, I think, yeah, the working group has a say there, but, uh, but the draft as it stands now still needs to be updated to reflect the uh, agreements, right? As yes. That's, yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, all right. Uh, so we have an, an, another action item. I think it's left, uh, um, it's on, on user defined indicator actions. And uh, I think that is, that is left open. Uh, just for reference, I think we left a reference there to see uh, user defined and private use, uh, both terms being used. Uh, but th the note we took on uh, July 14th was Stuart, John, and Matthew are meeting this week, and we will discuss. Loa consider the private use instead of user defined. So that was in July, back in July. I am not sure if there's any progress made. Uh, uh, since then, so this is on user defined indicator actions and uh, more specific on the requirements document. Um, any of the requirements documents editors. Uh, I think Matthew left. Okay. I, um, I don't recall. I think we must have dropped that ball. So, um, I guess we'll have to try and get together and have the discussion. All right. Okay, I think that's it on the action items that we are tracking. And let's go back to the agenda. Uh, interestingly, that we went over the next item, that uh, first nibble discussion. And I think, uh, Kiriti, if you want to add something on this one, feel free now. Uh, otherwise, I'll skip to the next. It's the same discussion we had, I think, uh, we closed on it. All right, you're muted. I, uh, if you're talking to me, I just dropped out and came back in because I need to see your, um, the, what's being shared. So now I can see it. Were, were you talking to me? Yeah, I was, you know, we had, we had added on the agenda, the discussion of first nibble a draft and I think we went over most of what we wanted to talk about, but I'm giving you a chance to, to add if you want to add anything. Um, no, I, I think at this point, I'm going to send an email to the working group mailing list and, um, ask if people have comments, you know, pro or con, you know, you know 
which which one they prefer to do of of these uh, of these three approaches, <clears throat> and see if there's any feedback. I guess one thing we can do right now, since we are all meeting here, is uh, I know Matthew dropped out, but <clears throat> um, is there a consensus uh, among the design team members that are currently present uh, in terms of what they would prefer in you know control plane versus data plane versus both? I don't see anyone raising their hand by the way, Kriti, but I will suggest that an email could be composed and sent to the list. And uh, I you know we can we can gather the feedback. Okay. Okay, moving on to the next item. Uh, we talked about uh, the solution drafts. Um, we are uh, there is a, um, a review of the documents present that uh, that uh, uh, Stewart had composed. Let me just quickly go to that M and A documents on our wiki, and uh, so he compiled uh, all the the, doc the drafts that are related to M and A, and specifically categorized under four one and four two. Um, so you will notice that uh, you know. Uh, there are there is a grouping for PSD documents or documents that are tackling the encoding of data in the post stack. Um, um, I need to go visit over the, the list again, but my impression that they're not competing and some of them will expire. But there is only there is one at the moment that's standing out, uh, which is the draft song MPLS extension header. And uh, um, this is uh, uh, this is being referenced by multiple drafts now, uh, and um, the authors uh, have already signaled that it's something that can progress to adoption. Uh, so we are uh, taking that into consideration from the chair's perspective. That's one one category. Then then there is the second category, which is missing uh, Jimmy's proposal. Uh, that he presented last week, um, most likely it's not there. Um, so uh, for for the post stack, I think that we have a, a, a grasp of what uh, what's happening and from the from the design team and the working group, what should progress and how do we uh, tackle that. For the multiple solutions, I think we uh, on the agenda we put out an item. Uh, should we gather a set of metrics? Given what Matthew had uh, had already presented, I think we it's a good thing that the design team uh, goes and reviews what happened in NVO three and start you know thinking about what metrics are important to us and uh, and what evaluation criteria do we want. So proposals are uh, there's a call for pro proposal here. Um, and it's in the hands of the design team. And uh, the, the floor is open for any ideas at the moment. So I'll, I'll stop and see if, uh, if anyone has anything to share immediately. Otherwise, we have to next, uh, next time we meet. Yeah, yes, not many ideas are coming up uh, right now. When that's fine, uh, maybe we need to sleep on it and start thinking about how do we want to tackle that. Okay, it's a bit silent, scary. <laughs> All right. Um, we don't have, we have an other business item. Um, I see Loa is coming to the, uh, to the queue and I'm happy to give you a chance to have to talk. Go ahead. Uh, so, uh, 
this is not exactly on what you were discussing, but actually, when we started up this meeting, Tony suggested that we actually scratch all the existing documents and start out new with a design team document. I see Tony uh, in the queue and I hope that he will kind of flesh this out a little bit more. I think we need to discuss it uh, before, before we go ahead. Which way we have a go. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Tony, go ahead. Uh, so, yeah, thank you. Um, so I think this is just learning from what Matthew had to present. You know, they were able to make progress by not having competing proposals and by letting one design team come up with one proposal. Um, and to me, that seems like a very fair way of proceeding because it stops us from each defending uh, particular past work and we are just open to a single discussion and more open to trading and dealing and compromising. Um, I think that trying to do things based on metrics is going to be extremely hard. Uh, quantifying things um, is going to be very, very difficult. And we're going to be making design trade-offs and those aren't amenable to quantitative analysis. It's all qualitative. So I'm open, very open, and I encourage everyone to consider doing a separate proposal. Okay. Okay. So this deserve, this is uh, this this proposal deserves some uh, some thinkings uh, from the design team as well as the solutions. Uh, Authors that are out there, uh, are they open to uh, um, start fresh uh, on a new proposal? Mm, yeah, so that's a good proposal. Uh, thanks, uh, Tony, for raising that. All right, I'll go back to the queue and see if anyone else wants to comment. And I see Loa. Uh so uh, I kind of I kind of agree with Tony uh, that this would be a fair way of moving ahead, but I would actually like to have input from the other authors group and uh, uh, either to the mailing list or directly to the shares or even privately uh, but uh, i think there need to be a discussion uh, actually to to sort this out uh, even though i think it would be a good thing if we actually could could restart everything and create just one document Could we give them an action item to for next time to give feedback on this idea? Who do you want to give the action item? Uh, I thought you said uh, the authors, uh, the other authors. Uh, but then you make the assumption that the answer is with the authors. It could be that we have a need an input from someone that is not in any author author of any document uh, or at least solutions document and well, I'm not sure how I mean if they have any different opinion maybe they should write a draft on their solution uh, but but I I you know I'm open yeah no, but I think you're placing a uh, an action item on the uh, uh, on the design team members with a uh, but putting a little bit special pressure on on uh, the authors of the existing drafts. But uh, what what I'm saying is, we, we don't want to exclude anyone that is not 
an author of a of an existing document. Right. Okay. So can we see what top the action item you put in there? I, I didn't. I'm, I'm still not <laughs> sure. What is that action item? <laughs> uh, let me, okay. Uh, let me see, see if we can come up with an action, some, some actionable thing to track. Um, so, so we have an action item on the design team. Give feedback on a super super solution. I think I heard. so. Uh, don't don't call it that. <laughs> Any single solution. New. In a new solution, a unified solution. Yeah, unified is probably. And it's probably not new. It's probably it's probably everything we have in there. Okay. Okay. I wrote feedback from authors of existing solutions documents or solution documents is highly uh, encouraged. That's fine. Okay. Uh, save this. And with this, I don't think I have anything else on the agenda. And so I'll give you the floor, Loa, if you want to do any closing comments. And then we can give 30 minutes back to the design team if we have nothing else. Um, I don't have any uh, any specific. Uh, Tony took part of what I've been thinking about and the, or no, uh, the other way around. Part of what I've been thinking about is actually within what Tony proposed. So I'm kind of, uh, I, I would like to see that go ahead, but uh, I, I would like to have a full buy-in from the design team to do it. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, it it can only happen if uh, if we um, if we have enough feedback on uh, approval approval of this approach. So let let me just say that uh, I've been in a situation similar a uh, couple of times before. Once was when we had the discussion between. Should we move LDP or should we go with RSVPT? Uh, I was not at the center of that discussion, really. I think Tony was much more involved. Uh, but the decision was actually to go by both. Uh, and there were good reasons to do that. The other one was that we had in the L2VPN working group, a, what I would say is a contention between the uh, LDP based uh, the L2 VPN and the BDP L L2 VPN, and uh, we uh, actually had fairly good motivations to go ahead with both solutions. So it, it's not unknown that we actually do more than one solution, but uh, I think if we can do more, just one, then that's fine. So I, I think the difference 
is that with the LDP BGP thing, uh, and I was at the center of that, the the working group um, sort of said, let's do both. But, um, you know, the industry said, no, 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 we should all do LDP. Um, I think I've been validated with EVPN saying we're going all in on BGP. Um, so I think it's important that we do both. Uh, but the difference with that one is that was primarily in the control plane. When you start looking at data plane and trying to, you know, have multiple implementations and you, you, you're talking about doing uh, hardware updates, uh, if it's microcode or firmware of some kind, it's a little more like software, but once you start getting deeper into, I want to put this in the mainstream um, hardware, um, that gets very expensive. So I think there is a difference, but um, uh, in the in the LDP BGP case, um, the, the industry was pushing in one direction, the IETF, the original um, L2 VPN uh, with BGP signaling was is not an RFC. Uh, it's not a standard stack RFC. It's uh, informational. The VPLS was stand, standard stack. So, so the design, not the design, the working group went in this direction. The industry tried to go in a different direction. But where we are today with um, uh, eVPN, I think everyone has now consolidated. There's no, there's no talk about doing eVPN with LDP today. So I think it is really what is fit for purpose. And I, I don't know that the industry always makes a good choice on that. Uh, I'm not saying that the work group always makes a good choice. But again, I want to make the distinction that um, hardware and software um, lead to different cost considerations. I hope we all can agree that one solution is the goal. And unless we have some other mechanism for getting to one solution, it seems like a joint proposal is the best way forward. Okay, uh, Loa, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, Tony, I agree with that. Um, it, Actually, Kureta missed uh, most of my comments. I compared not the technical solutions for uh, LDP or CPT on one side and uh, BGP LDP for L2 VPN uh, on one side. I was saying uh, what I was talking about was the buy in we need to actually move forward. Uh, and the buy-in does not always have to be for a good solution. The buy-in is buy-in, and we can actually move if it's good enough. Thanks. Well, the the, the LDP RSVP I, doesn't count in my mind because they they solve very different problems. Um, LDP was more about best, you know, shortest path, uh, following the shortest path and just having a label switch path, whereas RSVP was about traffic engineering. So it's more LDP and CRLDP, and CRLDP was uh, killed pretty well, killed at some point, right? Uh, but, but so for traffic engineering, we do have one solution, or at least we had one in the past. Now we have more, but that's a whole separate story. For BGP versus LDP for L2 VPN signaling, um, there, there wasn't a buy-in. We basically said, uh, the IETF said, we're going to do both. And I, I think in terms of um, doing both, um, you know, there was a lot of implementation, a lot of interest in LDP at the beginning. Today, all the momentum has gone to eVPN, and nobody is proposing a BGP, uh, uh, LDP-based solution for eVPN. So the difference um, is, um, you know, in doing two solutions, you get to to look at which is best fit for purpose. There is no reason, in principle, why someone cannot come up with LDP extensions. To, to do uh, eVPN signaling. 
just no one is doing it because it's not fit for purpose. Um, so I think from that point of view, it was good that we had two solutions. And as we went on to new applications, as we went on to uh, you know, go further down this path, we realized that you know, BGP is a better solution for this. Um, the, the, again, I'll come back to doing this for hardware can get very expensive. So if we did pro progress two solutions and the hardware cost was not high, we could then say, let us deploy them, let us do extensions, and then one of them might you know, turn out to be superior. But at the time that we did the BGP LDP discussions, nobody had eVPN in their mind. Nobody talked about actually signaling or carrying uh, MAC addresses in the signaling protocol. So we don't know what will come. And I would say that if it wasn't for the cost of hardware, we should progress, you know, more than one solution. I mean, not three necessarily, but or or five. But but um, the the problem is that hardware does tend to cost a lot. Okay. Um, I think you're raising your hand, Loa, still from last time. Um, Right? Okay, you lowered it. Um, with this, I think we we have enough to think, uh, to, to, to sleep on and think about for next time. Um, thank you for attending today. And we will stop right here. Thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. Bye-bye. you all. Yeah.